It's the show after the show. It's not what we normally do at our terrestrial show at KABC. Definitely not. This is actually much better. Well, we feel a little more free, I think. You know, you can talk like we really talk in real life as opposed to having a boss go, eh, eh, easy. They're not afraid to ask the obvious questions. Is the penis in her dreams a pretty penis? Frank Kramer gets sucked off by guys in the afternoon? Did you say shaving your pussy, man? Any puss will do. And schmees might even help out. If you were a dude, you'd want to be Frank. Wow, now look who's sucking my dick. <laughs> it's like hanging out with your friends and nothing is off limits. I'll give you a facial. <laughs> Just keep that cucumber away from me. I shit my pants, okay? <laughs> I shit my fucking pants. I gave up my bung cherry and you didn't even like it? You're such a pussy. I think you're incredibly gorgeous and I'd love to fuck you tonight. What do you say? Get away, get away, get away, get away. <laughs> <laughs> Recorded live in a studio in Frank's basement, it's After Hours with Heidi and Frank. That's right, and I hope you can hear today's After Hours. Yeah. Because um, something happened last week, and I'd like to apologize for it. I don't take any responsibility for it. It wasn't my fault. It was completely Shmiza's fault. Because last week, we, d- we recorded the entire show on the microphone that was built in to the computer. <laughs> And uh, hey. that's not funny. I'm sorry. He's getting a kick out of it. <laughs> Craig Shoemaker, ladies and gentlemen. Craig Shoemaker hanging that out. That strange with voice that just came yeah, in there. Yeah, yeah I'm, we had to uh, address this because last week it was a disaster. We yeah. came down here, we recorded it. It's like a number 25, 26th episode, right? 26? Yeah, something like that. And uh, everything went pretty smooth up until that point. And then did the whole show, hour long. And it recorded through the computer microphone. And so so the, you've heard, like, when you want to play a, a song out of the computer, it comes out of that one speaker. Mm-hmm. Right. That's how the whole show sounded. The it sounded like we were in an interrogation room or we were being recorded without our knowledge. It, like, you know the sound of that where you're trying to, like, hire a hit man to kill your husband? It's, like, it was that sound quality. <laughs> like somebody called you on their cell phone, but they didn't know they called you and their phone's in their pocket. And, they're right. talking and, to you're, <laughs> and you're trying to see who they're talking to? Oh, I get the pocket calls all the time. I got yeah. a pocket call from him one night when he was banging a porn star. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know why he kept his pants on while he was banging a porn star but anyway his phone rang me and I was like no, I called you on purpose I was calling everybody I'm, like, I'm banging a porn star I, I, I can so only weird. hope for those calls although I was impressed because it was like a 45 minute phone call but there was a lot of like preamble like she's going oh you are huh? oh let's do that they, she, like, she made him take a quiz or something before she slept with him it was weird do you remember that this is all through the pocket do you heard all this I did I heard some <laughs> stuff nice. yeah mm-hmm. you were squeezed up against that phone well it was because it was I was like well mm-hmm. I had to see it through till the end you know what I mean like when is this phone going to eventually cut off but it didn't so yeah, so you to... heard the, the screaming and the moaning in real life that's not fake on the porno and oddly enough it was you screaming and moaning I'm like, what the <laughs> hell is she doing to him I thought that's what she was into <laughs> I saw the movies. Did she say anything that would not be in a movie? Anything extraordinary that would not be written by a script doctor? It was it was amazing because she couldn't fuck at all. Really? Yeah, probably one of the worst lays I've ever had. Wow. I don't think I've ever told you that. I didn't know that. Like, I impressed myself. That's with I my remember you saying. Line, that. I was like, holy shit! You know, it's a porn star, and I'm pulling I'm, out all the tricks. I'm impressing myself. Yeah. But as far as like her being able to give a good blowjob, no, really? really? Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I like, can believe that. It's kind of like a, Mechanic- a mechanical bill, a, a bull, a mecha- <laughs> mechanical bill, mechanical bill, <laughs> <laughs> a mechanical bull. Right? Yeah. There's no personality. Right. Yeah. It's like yeah. it's not like they're in a real rodeo. Well, that's why they I just was, do what they do. You know, I always compare. It's it to... like those goofy actors that uh, they have no personality when you meet them in person. Oh. They're like they're they're shy mm-hmm. and, and introverted, and, and then like, you see mm. their character on like Jim Carrey. Yeah, I want that guy to come in. Yeah. He's what crazy. about what about people on radio? That's true, they're too. The they're the worst. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. As far as, like, yeah, the, the when, crazy guy. When they meet you, they actually use their radio voice. You go, when are you going to drop that? <laughs> Hello, Craig. How are you? I'm <laughs> fantastic. How are you? <laughs> I'm with the American Academy of Broadcasting. I used to talk like this, and I was lonesome, and you took you. And now I talk like this. 24-7, pass the pepper. <laughs> but there's got to be some pressure on a guy who does voiceover work when your life and your identity is your voice that you have to put that on. Mm. Hey, I, I, I never have, had one. I have a similar story. Uh, you know, I do the Love Master character, and I met this uh, young lady in Seattle. I was touring with uh, Kenny Loggins at the time, so the, the band, they were always you scoring. You toured with Kenny Loggins, and now we're sitting in Frank's basement. Oh, <laughs> Craig. Oh. You're really going up that ladder. <laughs> this is going to the top of my resume. Let me tell you something. <laughs> So uh, I was. I was, was he doing comedy or were you doing music? Back I actually then? did. Well, I didn't tell you that story about Broadway. We ended up on Broadway together. No, you, you and Kenny, Kenny Loggins. Yeah, honest <laughs> to God. 
How did we miss that in your Wikipedia? I don't. I don't know. Maybe, we, should, we should research people we're having on the show. Yeah. No, <laughs> I've only been on your show twenty five times. <laughs> I thought like I've exhausted one. every story. Every time I come here, I come up with another story <laughs> that I didn't realize I hadn't told. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I used to tour with uh, with Kenny, so it all culminated on Broadway. And it said, you know, Kenny Loggins, special guest, Craig Shoemaker on Broadway. I was all excited. Yeah. I, so I invite my idiot friends. You know, my friends. <laughs> yeah. My drunken yeah. idiot friends. They come up on the train so they don't have to drive so they can get drunk. Two and a half hours later, they show up. They're late. And in the meantime, they didn't realize this. Kenny says to me before the show, Craig, I'm freaking out. Trish is sick. Can you sing bass? This is an hour before the show. I go, sure. I, yeah, no problem. I can sing bass. <laughs> Foot loose. Foot loose. Like, it's like, you know, footloose on helium. I, I was so nervous. So I said, sure, I can handle it. And so they teach me the bass line. And Does he I, know you can sing at this point? Yeah, he's I, just taking I, a shot in the well, dark. I had toured with him oh. for an hour. And if you ever showed up at one of my shows, you can see that I actually do sing one song in my act there, Frank. Are you going to do one at the Canyon Club? You've got that I coming will. up July 9th, I, Canyon right? Club, July, July 9th. I'll be singing uh, from Phantom of the Opera, I believe. I will be uh, huh. <laughs> Now, how am I supposed to know little... anything about your shows and you knew nothing about my show and you came out of the fucking red carpet <laughs> event, you asshole? <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I mean, that is true. I, on film, he's like, "Fuck, I don't know why I'm here. What the fuck? Oh, why you saw that? Oh, I totally saw that. Oh, I think that geez. actually made the web. There's no, a, it did. There's a whole there's video. A web it daily. made the video. Like, it called, why the fuck am I here? Basically, I'm being interviewed by a woman. I had no idea who she was. <laughs> with a microphone in my face. You're our first guest, and I go, I don't even know what I'm here for. <laughs> I know. Except I saw for pizza it. that I actually paid for my pizza. <laughs> that really pissed me off. Really? You paid and then for they your said they paid for my parking, so I found a meter that was broken. So that was good for that. <laughs> It's a Frank Kramer production. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I had no idea. I but... sent you the fucking link so you could watch the show before you no, showed you up. No, you did not send yes, me a link. I was invited it. by someone else, not even you, by the way. <laughs> yeah, even... Yes, exactly. <laughs> you, weren't, you weren't the one who invited me, so don't say, I sent you a link. I said, call him. <laughs> You said call Craig? Yeah, I said call no, Craig. No, Shoemaker. I happened to call Eric, and he happened to invite no, me. shut up. I, I swear to God. I gave him a list of names of people that I knew. And, and I wasn't on it. No, you were see on Thomas Thomas Howell. Howell. Thomas Howell. 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 He didn't show, by right the way. Jack oh. McGee. Where was he? he wasn't and Jack there. McGee? <laughs> Jack McGee? He was on the list, too. He didn't He's show up. He's an old up. friend of mine, too. And he'll show, he'll show up at a, at a clam opening. <laughs> well, who are won't? You, are no, you serious? Come on. I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Not that kind of clam. Yeah, That's well, why well, I'm Now, can I get my Broadway story? Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is a Broadway story, for <laughs> okay. God's sakes. I know I'm in the basement here. So, so your buddies are drunk on so, their way to Broadway. So in the meantime, yeah. I learned the bass line for, this, uh, for Kenny's songs, and... So I, I'm performing, and they show up late with tubs of beer on Broadway, front row. I get them front row like idiots. Like the igloo coolers? No, they had I didn't the, know you were allowed to take that no, in. They, just, they brought a cup. They, they all had a cup spilling on people. Okay. Then they're going, hey, they're in the middle of Broadway, <laughs> yo, shoe, tell them about the time you pissed your pants in Miss Kimel's class. And they go, Stein, he's funnier than he is. He taught him everything. He felt his tits in eighth grade. Tell him that story. <laughs> All steiny. So, so they're heckling me, and I'm going, and I'm trying off mic. I'm going, it's not funny. Don't do this right now. I'm on Broadway. I don't give a shit if you're on Broadway. <laughs> we know where you come from. <laughs> so it was terrible. So, so they go in the front row, and they they passed out, literally passed out, and drunken, passed out idiots, coked up, and I come back out and sing with Kenny. I had sunglasses on, so no one saw the pain in my eyes as I searched for these notes. <laughs> So it's the acoustic set, and suddenly one of them wakes up. <laughs> goes, oh, God. Yo! There's shoes singing with Kenny Loggins! <laughs> Do poo quarter! <laughs> <laughs> we need the poo to. Yo! <laughs> So uh, it was a nightmare. Oh. But I ended up singing the whole week with him on Broadway. I was actually hoping the guy was sick all, all week. I was blowing on his chest. I wanted to. It was, it was so cool. <laughs> so the guy came back and you got fired? How'd he fire you? Who fired me? Kenny Loggins, obviously. His he back, never his, fired his me. Bass play, his bass singer no, came back. I still remained his comedy opening act, and I would write jokes for him, too. Oh. I actually wrote him a... What's know, a he, Kenny Loggins joke? Well, I wrote him... He, see, he does this... They all do interstitial things. I don't know if he realizes this, but singers hire comedians to write for them. Did you so know in that middle, like, oh. you know, one time... Like exactly. when Bruce Springsteen talks in between songs, yeah. like, one time... Yeah, one time to... Uh, <laughs> something funny happened the other night. To, to Graceland and... <laughs> You know, and then these and these two Jews walked up to the bar. <laughs> so the bear says to the rabbit, "You ever have trouble with shit sticking to your fur?" Remind yeah. me of this one. Yeah, that's where they get the jokes. Really? Is they have us write them for them. It's called interstitial, like the huh. in between. Barry Manilow has a has a writer. 
friend of mine. He seem like a funny guy. I know, and he's not, own. which is yeah. why he would hire my buddy tours with him. Yeah, but can you... Mm. Just writing jokes for... You know, so he would think I'm a joke writer for Barry Manilow. <laughs> do, do you have to <laughs> write a joke? at the top of your uh, <laughs> bio either. Do you have to write a joke for Barry Manilow, or Barry Manilow tries to deliver to deliver one of your jokes? Uh, Craig That's what I'm like, saying. Uh, yeah, yeah. so you, and then you make it personal. Well. So yeah. I actually wrote a few jokes for Kenny... <laughs> And uh, I remember one of them was uh, making fun of Sylvester Stallone. And uh, it was because it was a movie over the top. I think it was the, oh, yeah, the arm wrestling. Arm wrestling. Arm we wrestling. just mentioned that a couple of days ago on this show for whatever reason. I don't you know, know, you can't, you, you know, you're desperate when twice in a week you're at an over the top <laughs> reference <laughs> yeah. on your show. You're right. We should probably just Is pack that what it, it was up. called? Really it was did. called over the top. I think so. And he so, did like the pull ups on his semi truck. Right. With exactly. the water And he was trying to raise money for his kid or get his. But his hat on backwards. That's how you knew he was gonna, like getting ready. And yeah. this was a time Kenny was on fire <laughs> writing film music. The he did top Danger gun. Zone. Danger Zone. Right. Right? He did Footloose. He mm-hmm. did I'm All Right. You know, Caddyshack, right? Caddyshack. Mm-hmm. So why not throw in Over the Top? <laughs> so I I did. I wrote a joke for him. You know, like uh, that Stallone called him up and went, <laughs> you know, something like that. <laughs> I, but how can you be I, sure that he knows how to do that? <laughs> well, that was the thing. I gave him a joke that he could do an easy imitation. Okay. It was basically, so he called me up and <laughs> <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Well, this is the problem when your celebrity Stallone came to the show. <laughs> oh. And so Stallone was there and he didn't know it. <laughs> He's going, <laughs> So then from the audience, I guess he heard, <laughs> Well, whatever the case was. Oh, so then, what an asshole. So then, and Kenny called me up. <laughs> And he calls me up and he goes, I feel so bad because he's a very sensitive guy. He goes, I offended a friend. He actually went on stage and like did a big apology and everything. Talked you know, about the joke killer. No, yeah, he yeah, apologized yeah. after. Yeah. Like, and then he blamed me. He said, my friend Greg Shoemaker used to tour with me. He wrote that joke. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They, they, you, you write, uh, so I toured with him for a long time and uh, yeah, like a year and a half. Is that common for a comedian to open up for a Yeah, a it was life? for a while. I don't know if it goes on it's anymore. I haven't done it in a long time. I, opened, I used to tour with Ray Charles a little bit. That was wild. That was, <laughs> you know, what was really weird about is he had a manager who uh, you know, was real controlling and, and he dressed him. And that's the first time where you well, realize... Well, he can't dress himself. I know, but, you know... I mean, to me, they laid out his clothes, or there's well, no, Ray he, Charles with his legs he, in the air, and I'm putting his trousers on. <laughs> no, he, no, he, he right. didn't dress him like that. He oh. picked his wardrobe. Like a baby. Yeah. And you know, and when you see the wardrobe, you're going, Shoot, he must be blind. <laughs> really? I mean, it was so bad. Oh. Like, like something I wore to the prom. You know, oh. with like the powder blue. I think to go on the powder stage, blue tux, and I was like, it was the, embarrassing. What he put him in off stage. <laughs> the worst <laughs> dresser just going down to Chili's. No, no, he went on stage <laughs> with the and worst prom shit. outfit you've ever seen in your life. I figured a blind guy would be easy to dress, though. They can't bitch at you. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. And that's the only way he got away with it because mm-hmm. there was no way this was a good look. No one told Ray. But he was the nicest guy. And, you know, when I met him, he I, I was re- really weird watching the film and saying, hey, this is very accurate. Jamie, the Jamie he would feel He'd feel you up. Yeah, that's what you do. He'd shake your hand, and his other hand would like be feeling your rear end. And, yeah. Oh yeah. He's he's got he's got he had some uh, handful of the love master. Oh. Oh, I was telling you the story. Was he, like reading your ass zits like braille. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <sighs> yeah, Frank. What? Just like that. I'm a blind you know, ass reader. <laughs> 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 what do you do? I interpret for as zits. <laughs> what do you do for a living? No, I never thought of that before, but perhaps he was. But he did say to me, you're a strapping young man, aren't you? Oh, oh I guess I am. <laughs> Turn around. I think he was hitting on you. But the, uh, the love master, I'll tell you about this. So I was, I was up in Seattle. And uh, <laughs> so you talk about like not being able to, you know, like the, your porn star. She didn't live up to expectations. Yeah, you have a role as I love master. I talked this woman into being with me. But I did it as the love master. <laughs> and I was not me. I was not me. It was in a bar. Because it's a very different you. It was you in a hotel bar. We're all hanging out. And I'm going, these rock and roll guys always get laid. I'm, it's time for me. So I'm right. like, come on, baby. Take a look at this. And I whipped it out and everything. <laughs> no, you didn't. Oh, in the bar. Honestly, he does God. that. And I, what? He do? I, I, I totally pulled waiter. it out. And I go, and, and she was married. And I go, you know, oh, baby, yeah. You haven't seen this, have you, baby? Yeah. <laughs> Take your husband's and double it, baby. You know, like that kind of thing. Yeah. And she, she started to go, oh, God, okay, okay. <laughs> what? And it worked. It worked. What? Honest, this is all true. So I get in the elevator. In the meantime, I'm talking to the elevator. Press 12. That represents, baby, what I got. <laughs> everything, was, everything was love master. Everything. 
Oh. I'll take you down the shaft. Oh, yeah. Baby. <laughs> Love, master baby. So she's, she's literally like creaming and just, you know, all over me in the elevator. And I was like, you know, and I had never done that before. Like told somebody to cheat. I'm not really into that. And I was like, I told her, I convinced her to cheat. So every time you on her you husband, she said something. she'd never been with another guy. I'm old, baby. You uh, seen a guy, baby? It's a jackhammer. <laughs> oh yeah. Did anything happen like on the way back to the room where so, it was like, completely inappropriate? So let me tell you what happened. So so we go up the elevator. I press twelve. And you have to keep this thing on the whole time. You can never I'm, just I'm say something as you. I'm master. Exactly. I'm never me the entire time. You don't want to risk her going. You know what? I think. Oh, uh-uh. nobody wants to be with me. <laughs> really? Yeah. No, no woman wants to be with Jokester Boy, you know, who looks like John Boy Walton. They want to be with the badass guy. You know, where's the mole? No, but nobody's thinking that. Oh, I, I can't wait to be with, with a bad 70s drama. Lost the mole, lost my career. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah. So, so now I, I convince her, you know, <laughs> we're in the elevator. I go, Let me press that button from back here, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so we get up. And I'm not exaggerating. I, I I opened the door and I really saw that this was going to happen. And, and I became me. And I went, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I was done. <laughs> I was done. And then it was. <sighs> now, I'm going to turn to the two guys on this one who are going to understand this. So once you're done your first go round mm-hmm. on your one nighter, right, which was literally not a go round. I don't even think I, it was in. <laughs> so here I convinced her to do something and told her what was going to happen to her. So she's already like lost her integrity and she's got, oh, the hell with it. It'll be worth it. I'm going to, you know, I told her she'd see fireworks. Well, this was, I mean, it, it was for one second and it was literally one second. It was huff, puff, psh, gone, done, done. So now, wow. what do you do? So now I try. The second round, we're always good. I was going to say, ha- hopefully you had a nice short refractory period and you could get right back. Like, oh, I'm just going to uh, I'm gonna go to the bathroom real quick. No, no, but that was the problem is I'm now out of character. Oh. I'm only me. So I'm going. He blew his load and turned into Craig. <laughs> he turned into Craig. No, no, I turned into Craig, then blew the load. Oh, okay. That was not the love match. Oh, okay. right. No, I was only me for like maybe the door. Like, oh, I got to shut the door. I mean, I think, oh. I'm sorry, baby. Let me shut that door. <laughs> I mean, it was like I came out of character just for the one second of the bad second. And it was like, that was not good. And then I was going, what am I going to do? And I was like, you know, I was thinking of like, thinking of stuff to keep me going. You know what I mean? Like I was, oh, my grandfather in the casket. That's a bad memory. Oh, oh that'll keep me going. Oh, Wolf, Wolf of Brimley, give me a sponge bath. Oh, yes. Oh, that's no. fantastic. Right. So that's anything. what I was, th- anything to keep it going. I'm going over the, the, the 1978 Phillies lineup. Oh, <laughs> Manny Trio at second base. Ah, you did it. So. <laughs> Oh, it was terrible. I mean, I was the worst ever. And once I came out of character, and she went, she, I think she even said the words, that's it. Oh, you know, my like, God. You know what I mean? Like, like you ruined oh. my life, I my cheated on my husband over for that. that. That's it. And I'm going, oh, oh, let me get going again. You know? <laughs> so now, now I'm back to Footloose. Oh, so shit. so now I, mm. I'm trying to keep, now she's going, no, I got to go. You know, and I'll go, wait, wait, I work it up. And then I'll go all night. No, 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 really be the love master. He's coming back. Just give him a chance. Oh, my God. And it was terrible. That's and she didn't give me that second chance. So I always think, every time I, I was just in Seattle a few weeks ago, I always think about how if she ever sees me on TV, go, oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, he's really the love master. Uh, all right. Yeah, she's told every one of her friends so that at, story. at the hotel bar when you met her, she knew of you doing love master. She just didn't know you at all and one of the truth is the back master. then this is so long Had ago i was not show. doing the love master i was only doing a love master on the loggins bus and, oh, and okay. the plane testing I, it out that's how i did that's how i t- tested that <laughs> character was uh, this is back in the 80s and i was like testing the and these guys would laugh and I, and I go hey i'll try it in real life so i'm in this bar and said, we were at the show you were funny and i'm oh baby <laughs> let me show you what i got under here baby oh, and i just God. took it out and uh, and I said, you want to pet it, baby? <laughs> yeah. It's a Gila monster. <laughs> so I don't know what the hell I was saying. I was, wow. I was making up names for it. And she's going, oh, my God. She's like petting. She petted? She's petting it. Literally pet it in the bar. You know, she just started petting he it. He does show his, his wiener to anybody. You'd you show it to Heidi right now if, uh, if she asked. You know, I made that right? mistake one time on the air and uh, in San Francisco. It's a true story. Yeah? On Alice Radio. I'll never forget it. 
And um, I, she met my challenge. I didn't think she would. This is morning radio, terrestrial yeah. radio. It wasn't like this, where we have to hide my kid in the other room. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I want to tell that story. <laughs> yeah, I came here with my kid uh, who loves to watch me to... do radio. And even this, they, they, yeah. they turned to me as soon as he went to the bathroom. Is he going to stay here? And I'm going, sure, he loves watching radio. We talk about cocks and pussies. <laughs> I go, yeah, it's after hours. <laughs> it, 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 they weren't like even like subtle about it. Get him out of here. Yeah. Now, most radio people go, it's no fun, no problem. Have him sit right there and watch us. <laughs> but this was like, are you kidding me? I'm going to talk about it. Well, when I went to pick up, I, I had to pick Greg up to, be, or Craig up to bring him here. Yeah. And a uh, long she story. Did. And so I pick him up and he's he's got his kid with him. And I'm like, um, hmm. Yeah. Am I dropping the kid off? I noticed and hesitancy. I thought it was over the dog seat being in the back and not having room for it. Right. Like, it you, turns out it was, over, it was over cox pussies and, I was and like, vaginal Because I know some of the stories. <laughs> I know some of the stories I have to bring up later. And I'm going. Oh, can't do that one. No, not going to do. Mm, no. So. Yeah, I had a story about a chocolate stop. bar shaped like a cock. That's why. <laughs> right. And like, you were thinking about the, that like, as, okay. as he entered the room. Yeah, that's not a good one to hear. <laughs> Open that door. If he's on the other side, and we're going to lose it laughing. If he's got really? his ear to the door. Come on, please. I hope so. Ooh. No. Oh, Damn it. No. <laughs> he's not the little love master I thought he was. <laughs> we were at SeaWorld yesterday, and he got hit on. I couldn't believe it. He got picked up by, like, this chick was built like a 25-year-old. He, he is a good-looking kid. I was kid. checking her out. <laughs> She's with my son. He's 11. She said, do you want to go on the ride together? But no, I will. <laughs> You're pushing him out of the way. <laughs> Come here, baby. <laughs> Let me show you a shy move. <laughs> oh, it's over. No, the real it. Craig showed I'm him. sorry. My 11-year-old came. <laughs> that was him. You came like an 11-year-old. And I did that day in Seattle. So it was. A, uh, that's gonna be a proud moment, though, in line uh, for a ride, and you yeah, see your son. It was. I got to admit working it. Working some action. Not only, but it was very funny. It was seriously. She was built like a twenty-five-year-old. He said she's a ninth grader, and he's in fifth grade. And they <laughs> literally pulled him from my care and said, "We're taking him." So we're watching uh-huh. him in line and doing the whole leaning back and smiling. And the other kid had hair on his. He's got. Bangs and he's oh, chucking that, that weird he's, he's haircut. Ch- yeah. That, yeah, he's chucking his bangs to the side. Yeah, he's yeah. doing that whole the whole flip. <laughs> I and hate that. And that was my friend's kid. <laughs> so the two of us are. <laughs> oh well, computers Somebody's got mail. <laughs> your, yeah. your time is up. Thank you, Craig, for stopping by. Thank was, you, thank you for having me. Now I'm going to go <laughs> instead of the red bulb in the back of the theater. And now yeah. I'm going to go with my son and have a frosty freeze and do things that you're supposed to do with your with your child, with your 11 year old child, instead of taking them to after hours. <laughs> Cocks and pussies, vaginal warts, oh my. <laughs> so, uh, you know, he's going to hear these stories about his dad, yeah, you know, well. back in the day in the, in the 80s with Kenny Loggins. Mm-hmm. Those were the days. Um, what, what were we talking about? Oh, about being proud. We about had 9,000 things we're talking about. Yeah, this, we're, it's like, bring it back. We're <laughs> meandering. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I big like time. Mm-hmm. Well, we, we were talking about uh, your porn star. And we, so oh, we, we proud had moment. That's what I mean. Proud yeah. moment of watching your son actually get hit on. She's twenty five. He's leaning back. He's, he's looking on. And cool. then the other one was uh, was kind of hot. And it turns out she's from Mexico. And I go, she's working him for his green card <laughs> already. <laughs> Hi, puppy. You are cute. You're so cute. She said she goes. You got some nice eyes. <laughs> he does have nice eyes, though. Really? Yeah. He's a, you have beautiful children. Yeah. Uh, well, I couldn't believe this. I had a little proud moment because they were both older and stuff. They're little boobies. And one was really built like a, I mean, she had big hips and everything. I'm going, are you kidding me? The Mexican? No, no. Actually, she I, she didn't she didn't have an accent whatsoever, but she she said she was from Mexico. She had black hair and the other one. Anyway. <laughs> so switch it around because uh, if, if that had been your daughter, your 12-year-old daughter. Because I have a 12, oh, I would, 13 uh, next month. Would have taken her out of line. <laughs> I would have, I would have like zipped Ninth her out. Ninth grade boy runs over, grabs yeah. her. She's fifth grader. We're we're taking her. She's going with us. Yeah, can you imagine? You'd be Fuck. in jail. You'd be, you'd be in prison right now, right? I turned to the other husband as you know the other father, and I'm, I'm, it was a no brainer for either one of us having guys. Right. Yeah. It was a no brainer. We were actually that was the most fun I had at Sea World was watching these two kids get hit on and then hitting back. Yeah, your son calls it SeaWorld now, but the sea is completely different. He'll never look at it the same way again. I'm like, I love SeaWorld, Dad. Oh, I'm sure he's going to go into fifth grade. Hey, I want the cunt world. Is that the sea you're talking about? Well, of course. <laughs> I'm sure he's going to use they that re- material. If they rename it that, I guarantee their ticket sales will go up. Oh my God. They do what there now? You can ride what? <laughs> you can have lunch with what? A trainer was killed by what? <laughs> Every day is, is Lilith Fair <laughs> at Cunt World. <laughs> 
can't even believe I'm saying that word. Why did you, why'd you make the, me the say that? The pink raincoats for the splash zone. <laughs> oh, oh, splash oh, fuck. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, then, then they ran into each other again, and they pulled him into the splash zone with him. Honest to God, they they, the they, hots. Yeah, they, they were they were all after my kid. But I, I am <laughs> okay. Fish to the audience because they. No, I understand. I shouldn't At Sea World. There. Yeah, Sea World. Yeah. Speaking of that, I had a facial the other day. <laughs> Want another one? No, a real one. <laughs> I, 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 I had never had one before. You haven't? Maybe like a long time ago. It was kind of weird. You, even with your, your little gay boys, never uh, had a facial before? Me and my gay boys? No, you, you're you a gay boy. <laughs> you're a racy race oh, boy. What's happening? Uh, I'm, uh, I'm going to let that go. <laughs> is this, whatever whatever is that this is. Is even taping? I'm getting heckled by sound effects now. I've had people. <laughs> I've, had, I've had animals, police cars heckle me You know, from outside. I've never been heckled by sound effects from the engineer. <laughs> from the laptop. Any second we're going to go, you've got mail. <laughs> what are you talking about, my gay boys? I, know little, I, I, little, I love to hang out with the gays. No, but, no, your little gay character that you do. Oh, no, no. You don't do him anymore. Well, huh? I do him, but I mean, it's a character, Heidi. Well, <laughs> Just know. like the Love Master's a Just character. It's so good, though, that it's dead it's on. So, You've never oh. had a facial. Well, no, yeah. and I've hung out with the, the, a lot of gay guys. I love, I'd love. i rather hang out with gay guys than straight guys, yeah. to be honest with you. Straight mm-hmm. guys are always macho, <laughs> Straight guys don't towels. suck your dick. <laughs> 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 Well, I'm not saying that. It doesn't always have to go to the dick sucking. I know that's part of After Hours uh, mantra, if oh, you yeah. will. Yeah. But no, I mean, hanging out with gay guys, you know, straight guys are a butchy and you know punch each other. I don't like that. It hurts. <laughs> you know, the most the most my gay friends do is hurt me emotionally. And it's always about what you're wearing. Look who walked in, Thurka. Everything Thurka, 1987. Looks like Wham had a reunion. Thurka. Everything's Thurka. So they can have an F. I love the gays. Oh, my God. Honest to God. It's much my rather favorite be, character If I could do. convince my gay friends to golf, I would be in heaven. <laughs> I'd be in heaven. I have golf partners that could accessorize me. How would you be if, it, if your son got pulled out of the uh, and if he was gay? world line by a ninth grade boy? Hmm. Who, what do you think the answer to that is? <laughs> Just what do you think? All scenarios. What do you think? Here. All scenarios. So if, if, if I have a girl, man, no go. The only the, the only go is what happened yesterday. A boy who I believe is straight, <laughs> yeah, is going to go with those girls, and I'm going to have more laughs on it. And ten minutes on the show. <laughs> and ten minutes here. Yeah, everything's material. <sighs> These poor kids. They have no idea. How about how about the face on my child when he met Heidi today? Was the best. <laughs> I six year old, you didn't see it. I didn't get to see it. Well, we were driving from SeaWorld. We drove up this morning from San Diego, and he's listening to her on the air, and he actually said, I want to meet her. And I'm going, <laughs> Well, guess what? You will in a few minutes. You're like the best dad ever. Do you, how yeah. many times do you get to grant the magic wish? <laughs> well, okay, we'll go see her right now. Oh, right now. We're going to meet her. And it was so weird for him. Do you imagine that? Like you're watching TV when you're a kid, and you're going, Who? Oh, oh, I want to meet the mermaid. <laughs> no problem. I shall deliver that for you. You know, it was like you know, yeah. the only virtual reality I had was Winky Dink when I was a kid. Ever hear of Winky Dink? Yeah, Winky Dink. Winky Dink. And we were too poor to buy the Winky Dink kit. You had to put this screen over your TV screen, and you would draw, and I go, Winky Dink needs a bridge. And you go, Oh, help you, Winky Dink, and you would draw the bridge for him, right? Yeah. <laughs> we were too poor. We never bought the kit, so I just took crayons and drew on the screen. My mom would go. Hoss Cartwright has a mustache. Oh, Winky Dink's bridge, mommy. So, uh... <laughs> now we have another sound effect. I think it's the phone. Whose phone is that? Home phone. It's my Good home Lord. phone. I know. Where are we here right Should now? I get that? No, don't get that. So, so my son this It's like this when morning. the phone's ringing during sex. You're like, should I get that? Well, no! Just ignore it. Let it go. Can we just add some other strange sound effects on top of this? Like a horse running by yeah. and shit. Like, this randomly throughout oh, this entire post. show. How about Thank my 11-year-old you. humping in the other room? Right. Could that possibly happen? you think happen? that's happening? What channels are on that TV that he's watching? And there, like, there are no parental controls. He had it on Disney. He had it on, TV. Oh, really? He's, he's doing something up there. Uh, so, yeah, we did get him out of the room. But the six-year-old, when he meets Heidi today, it was the weirdest thing. So here you're listening on the radio. Your father says, I shall f- supply that for you right now. He says, I want to meet the girl on the radio, Dad. I'm oh. okay. So he walks in and he meets her. She's like, you're so cute. <laughs> 
And then she turns around and her ass has a big tattoo on it. <laughs> oh, I, no, 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 I didn't say big ass. I said her ass, her beautiful ass, has yeah, a yeah. tattoo on it. So imagine you meet the dream and then she turns around and her pants are low and you've got a tattoo. And I said to him, can you read that? <laughs> I know you can read now, although it was in cursive and Italian. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> then he turns and he goes, buongiorno. Uh, right. Oh, his face was classic. His face was classic. He, 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 that was he, his magic he, moment. He'll never forget so that. He just, Another bonding moment for me. Here's me with my six-year-old, both of us looking at her ass, trying to, <laughs> trying, to, trying to read as she's walking away, bending over to see the little one. Yeah. So yeah. she's bending over to see him, and my six-year-old's just like full-on staring, because at six, you can get away with I have to do glancing. He looks like, he looks like says, how trashy. <laughs> Isn't that called a tramp stamp? Yeah. Yeah. What a whore. Are you sure you're six? Right. Yeah, I gave the whole Shoemaker family a show. <laughs> He interpreted it for me. He says, it's, in Italian, Dad, that means if you're this close, you're banging me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, that was, it was just, that was uh, such a great morning for that. <laughs> it was just to be able to deliver it right there. I delivered SeaWorld yesterday and then. And uh, SeaWorld today. <laughs> and, sea, and another SeaWorld. <laughs> he smelled SeaWorld today. So has your act changed? Because I've seen your act several times, but has it changed because of the kids? Yeah. You, you put them in there a lot then, oh right? Oh, God, yeah. Everything in my life, uh, this is what I think is missing in comedy. I think that storytelling is a lost art. Who's and your I, favorite I, comedian? I don't know. I have any. You don't? Honestly, So God. as a kid, like, did you always want to oh, be a comic? Oh, no, that's a different story. Uh, yeah, I wanted to be one for a long time. My, my town uh, was raising money to send me to the gong show. <laughs> that's what they, I was Holy like 16 shit. years old, and they were raising money. Did you get to go? No, I don't mm. know what happened. They couldn't uh, get enough money. I, mm. uh, yeah, there were it was a keg party. Most of the money went to the keg. Yeah, yeah. Like, mm. That's the reason they had it. It's Another like, keg. Let's just get a keg. <laughs> right. Let's, let's, pass say, around the yeah, let's say you're 16 years old and you raise this money. And you're looking at this pile going, should we get another keg yeah. or Shen Sumaker to the gong show? <laughs> 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 what do you think the choice was? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I never did make it to the gong show. But, uh, yeah, I've been doing it a long time. I, I started in high school. I started performing in so high you, school. So you would, listen, you would and, listen to who? and go, my God, he's so funny. I love him. Believe it or not, I, I, but the biggest influence ever is Bruce Springsteen. I went to, uh, talk about the interstitial stuff. Is, yeah. But when I went to this concert in 84, it was the Born in the USA concert, I just, I just said, wow, that is entertainment. I mean, first of all, he does three hours. You know, and if you've seen my show, well, Frank never has. That's I've been couple. to your show. No, you haven't. Maybe once. No, 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 no. You've never been to a full show. I do an hour and 40, 45 minutes. So I say, Springsteen does that, right? Well, you walk out exhausted. You're just, wow. Yeah, you emotionally, everything. you're just drained. Brings everything. it from the heels, tells the truth. You know, all this, you know, these are stories that happened to him, and that's what I want to do in my act. So I said, that's what I want to do on stage is, you know, do a comedy version of, of what he does. And that's what he's known for, Craig Shoemaker. Is that, so when you the get, Springsteen of comedy. <laughs> yeah. When, when, no, we, people say when you get there to the time you leave, I mean, you're just not, it's hard to catch your breath. No, you, I, I will attest yeah, to that. Everyone has chronic asthma. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and that's, that's, you don't give anybody a break. And that's the goal. That's kick ass. Yeah, it is. You know, it's so weird. I've been told that a lot. Almost like, could you please give We're us just a break? Like, just like, hang on. Pace the stage for a second so I can. Yeah. And I'm so uncomfortable <clears throat> not getting laughs. It's very weird. And yeah. I've, Me too, I've, but I've almost, very used to it. <laughs> yeah. She's built up a callus. <laughs> I try, Comedy I try. callus. <laughs> I'm looking at the audience sometimes, and I see them. They start grabbing their faces, and yeah. they go, "My face hurts! Shut the fuck up! Just one second, give me a break! I got Bell's palsy over here. I'm, try- I'm sick of smiling." And yet, and yet, there's part of me that goes, "Come on, keep on hurting them." And there's another part of you, just you, stroke you, them out. Just, <laughs> they're all walking out. <laughs> They'll get Dick Clark by the time they walk out. They can't come back from it. They're like, How'd you like the show? Oh, I love it. Yeah. Oh, Dick Clark and Kirk Douglas. Did I ever tell you I actually watched Coming him. back from the shoot Craig Shoemaker show. <laughs> it's it's Dick Clark, yeah. You know, his, his, you know his, Michael Douglas' mother is my next door neighbor. Oh, no. And huh? very good friends. And she had a birthday party. Don't and you he feel gave, like an asshole? I he, really kind of do. No, you shouldn't because right. I ended up doing the impression too. Because <laughs> he did a toast. And here I am. I'm sitting there. Oh, and my I'm, God. And, I'm, you know, I'm a comedian, for God's sakes. Yeah. And she, by the way, she comes to my show all the time as mom. So she's a big fan. So she's got to know I'm going to rip on the guy. Yeah. How could and you it's not? his ex-wife. You know, they've been married since, like, 1948. And he's given a toast. The first time I need eyes on her. <laughs> I'm going, you got to be fucking kidding me. 
first of all, I'm going, this is too <laughs> surreal. I'm a, right. I'm the poor, I, I grew up poor right. outside of Philadelphia, mm-hmm. right? And I'm sitting here next to the Sparta fucking kiss. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Doing a toast. Yeah. You know, and I'm at the table with Catherine Zeta Jones. You know, I'm like, I'm like, you know, this little poor Craig Shoemaker, you know? And then and he's right next to me. He's like, well, one foot away. And then. She was on the cover of Night Magazine. <laughs> wow, Spartacus. <laughs> how, how far are you? <laughs> uh, don't stop. I know, it's terrible. Uh, and here I am doing an impression of him. <laughs> I won't be invited to the 90th party. <laughs> I, don't think, I think I got invitations. I, gotta go. I, don't, think, I don't think many will. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. I, every time I work with people that I, I you know, celebrities, I ruin the relationship by fucking with them. Yeah. That's, that's the problem. I, I'm too cynical or something, and, and I, I just take it down the comedy have you road, truly and they pi- don't want to go there. Have you truly pissed somebody off that you like is, uh, would be uncomfortable for you to be at a Hollywood yes. party and yeah. go, oh, fuck. But you ran to Ray Charles Mitty. again. He's like, motherfucker's here. No. <laughs> take no, me to him. No, it wouldn't be him. I need to feel that motherfucker. <laughs> Grab that motherfucker's oh, ass. Much worse stories that I've, I've definitely. Well, Magic Johnson, that's the classic of all time. You know, getting fired from that show and doing... You, my, you did what on there? For, you were a writer? He I was, was uh, the man, right? I was his, oh. No, I was the co-host. I was supposed to tell him jokes. You, I told this story. No, I know the story, I, but I'm thinking I just remember the actual Craig. show. No. Would, every time... Well, what happened was... So, you know, I had given up my own TV show to be his co-host because I was going to tell him jokes sitting next to him and he was going to respond. Okay. And it's a talk show and Fox and it's big and Sheila E's the band leader. Oh, yeah, You're yeah. excited. I'm yeah. excited. I'm backstage and this guy Slingblade, they brought him in, this writer from the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson Tonight Show. That's how old the references were. The guy had a members only jacket and mullet cut. I called him Slingblade because he had a jutted out jaw and he talked. Like, mm-hmm. I got a good one for you, Craig. I wrote jokes for Johnny. <laughs> Johnny. Johnny loved my jokes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> water's cold. Water's deep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So this is a true story. They bring this guy in, and we're having great rehearsal shows. I'm making Magic laugh, and that's what I'm supposed to do. And I'm the co-host, and I'm relating to the guests. They had these real rehearsal shows. And they started panicking, because I guess the meter people, you know, they put people with meters, and it was going way low. What do you like when you This show is not going to work. So they go, you shut up, basically, and tell these jokes from Sling Blade, the genius writer. So I said, Sling Blade, I'll get booed. And this is a quote. He goes, mm-hmm. my boo is as good as a laugh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a boo is as good as a laugh. That's what I said, Heidi. <laughs> what the You're hell? You're channeling me in 1998 right now. That's what I said. A boo is as good as a laugh. Johnny loved to be booed. Mm-hmm. That's I, Heidi's motivational I poster in the fucking office. <laughs> it's Johnny. It's that Johnny. when it happens? It's fine. Mm-hmm. It's good. Mm-hmm. A boo is as good as a laugh, oh right? So God. I said that to him, and he goes, Johnny loved to be booed. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be booed. And did you ever hear Johnny Carson get booed? <laughs> right. Well, he got the ooh, and he would, and he would have those real little recoveries oh, and everything. Yeah. But that's how you knew him for 40 years. Yeah. I was brand new. No one knew who I was. You want to do your stuff. My stuff. Yeah. And now Sling Blade writes the worst jokes. Now, understand, he made me tell this joke. They said, you have to tell his jokes. I said, oh, this is going to be not good. <laughs> Mostly urban crowd. They're screaming for magic. I'm backstage. Can't wait to come out. Sling Blade wrote my intro for magic. And here it is, word for word. He goes, all right, everybody. Let's get the show started with my co-host. Here's a guy nobody would shower with. Craig Shoemaker. I'm back there going, <laughs> Nobody what? would shower with Nobody <laughs> would shower with me? I don't even get that. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> So now, would you guys please go back with me and understand? I'm backstage hearing this intro for the first time. I just won all these awards, Emmy Awards, but now I'm the guy nobody would shower with. And that's the that's first. not even funny. It's, exactly, it's, it's, not funny and not good for an intro for your new co-host that well, you're gonna hear. Kind of it's, it's not <laughs> fucking funny, Frank. It's not funny. We, we please no. have some empathy and compassion for the guy who's unknown, who's backstage. Premier episode. I've got girls who wouldn't go to the prom with me watching, thinking I'm going to get even. And I'm the guy nobody would shower if any, with. If anything, nobody would want to shower with magic with the AIDS and all. Well, oh, well, look at me with the comedy. Oh, that's true, too. Oh, but right. where does that intro come from, right? So that, that's the first America knows this strange guy is, here's a guy, no, they're going to come out dirty. You know what I mean? What am I gonna, 
what's going to come out from out of the curtain? So I come popping out with my stupid walk that I can't stop, that I've been doing since I was born, with a, like, like a piston where my head enters the room 10 minutes before the rest of my body. I have the worst fucking walk. I hate it. Like you're riding a horse? Well, yeah, it's like kind of this, this walking. It's just a bounce where the head is forward. I'm a, a, a lean to. I'm like, as opposed, <laughs> to, as opposed <laughs> to up. Like you're yeah. falling forward, but you're catching yourself falling while you forward, walk. Yeah, with a little bounce. And you hate it. No matter where I've lived my, in my whole life, everybody puts the same music to it. Right. So I come walking out, trying not to do it. And I sit down next to him. Sling Blade writes this joke. Magic goes, hey, Craig. How about that Bulls game? I said, Magic, I haven't seen him beating like that caught on tape since Rodney King. <laughs> oh, ha ha, Frank. Oh, my God. Yeah. More, Urban more, crowd. More. Thanks. Thank you, Heidi. <laughs> That's Holy the reaction shit. that I got was the one you just gave. Mm. A gasp. You could have heard. He well, heard you know, she's going, from, oh, oh, no, motherfucker did not just say that. <laughs> that motherfucker did not just say that. That's what they're That gonna dirty ass motherfucker nobody showered did not just say that. <laughs> John Bird motherfucking looking like John Middle motherfucking said that shit. What did he say? That was, it was a what he fucking say? Motherfucking John they, Boy Walton. She's taking they, off her earrings already. Like, what the fuck? They my first joke. The sling blade wrote, these are the first words out of oh my, my mouth. Oh God. Is he like behind stage? You can see him. He's like, eh, 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 <laughs> laughing at you. <laughs> like, you can get him back. Call me sling blade. <laughs> oh my God. So, so I'm, I'm telling you, oxygen mass popped out of the ceiling. It was a gasp like this. That's where I go. I go, beating that close to Rodney King. <laughs> like that. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> My life flashed before me. And it's so then I thought he would bail me out. I forgot he doesn't know how to talk. <laughs> Magic Johnson's going to come up with some clever retort now. No, he just goes, oh, Craig, you are bad. <laughs> Remember, everybody, that was Craig, the co-host, not me. Oh, oh my God. He threw me right in a wood chipper. <laughs> so I'm going, you son of a bitch, you were known for the assistant basketball. <laughs> Give me the comedy ball, you brick. And he never would. He always never wanted to look bad. So every time I choke, there would be another joke, a bad Nell Carter reference. The, the references from Sling Blade were terrible. Give me a break. I had to do Give me a break references. Yeah. I'm going, are you kidding? I'm not going to say this shit. <laughs> So anyway, so every time I talk a joke... Oh, I am curious about the Nell Carter joke. To tell a joke about a celebrity. It was a fat joke, <laughs> and the course. guy was so bad. So this writer was terrible. And every time I tell a joke about a celebrity, Magic never wants to look bad in the community. He'd just go, oh, Craig, you are bad. <laughs> well, what you said, remember... <laughs> And then he would go, now he's not going to come on the show. And I'm sitting there thinking, oh, that ain't the reason. He's not coming on the show. If you could pronounce the movie they're starring in. Oh, my God. Michael Clark Duncan, this is no exaggeration, was in Armageddon. Magic is reading a cute car going, hey, up next from the movie Armageddon. <laughs> now, here he is from Armageddon to do. Oh my god, da dee da do. Oh, Craig. How do you say that word? I say, just say end of the world. <laughs> it's the end of my life, the end of my career. What have I done? I seriously, I was having flashbacks. It was terrible. How, how long did that show last? Well, I lasted very few days. And the opening, by the way, the opening day, who's the first guest? Arnold Schwarzenegger. Can you think of two better communicators? Yeah. Here, I'm intimidated at first. Then I realized I could be the UN translator for these two people. <laughs> was he able to get his last name out? No, I'm not. He is Arnold. <laughs> think of my friend Arnold. Yeah, so, don't even mess with this, the actual, <laughs> this is the actual conversation. That's when the show's canceled. You can right, mess with right. today. Now you have to understand, I'm this little kid from Philadelphia sitting with these legends, and they had this ass-kissing conversation that went like this. This is word for word. He goes, Arnold, the reason I had you as a guest on my premier talk show, you make a lot of money for a lot of the needy people. Folks, don't he give it up for the needy? No, and they're screaming, yeah, no magic, you don't want to give all that money back. You got the AIDS awareness, the Magic Johnson theater, helping them kids there in California. Come on, Arnold, you don't want one of them special lipids, helping those needy kids. And I'm sitting there thinking, how am I going to blend in? <laughs> so I, I lean over. I almost gave a buck to a homeless guy. He didn't have change for a 10. Oh, Craig. <laughs> Oh, you are bad. Oh, my God. Now, the homeless guy's not going to come on the show. <laughs> oh, for the love of so God. So, you ask me who I don't want to run into. He would be on the list. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Craig, I remember you. Oh, okay. My ex-wife ran into him with uh, Ty Bo. They were always at Ty Bo together when uh, I was popular. And, uh, she, and he's The Billy Blanks show. Tell Craig I said hi. 
So she acted like he didn't have a problem with it. But I've told that story on a few radio stations. I do remember. They fired me in the middle of the show, though, Mm. on day three. (laughs) Day three only lasted three days? Well, I only lasted. They were blaming you for the the, the dial turning down on the uh, They blamed me, and they said, said, during the commercial break, the first commercial break, the guy walks on stage, and it was a complete surprise. He goes, "Uh, Craig, the people upstairs decide you're going to be off the couch now. The people upstairs, like it's a horror film. The people upstairs (laughs) in suits. I go, what are you talking about? He goes, get off now. I go, no, I'm not coming off the stage. And I look fired is as good as a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I look over to Magic. Maybe he'll help me out. He's glazed over the cue card. I'm a good dude. <laughs> so they rip me off the stage, literally. And then at the end, they, oh, the first words out of Arsenio, he was the guest. He walks out and he goes, where's you? <laughs> He's he funny. Did. Now Magic has to ad lib where Shoe is. He goes, I just wanted to hang with you alone. You're my old friend. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. I wasn't on the cue card. Look at that. Maybe so he, was, that. he was growing. And then at the end, he had to ad lib the outro because um, they, they weren't prepared for this. They, didn't, they were just ad libbing the whole show. So they, uh, you know, do you remember Gilligan's Island the first year? It was the professor. There was no professor Marianne yeah, in the it was song. Just, right, right. Were, and the and rest. The rest. Yeah. Why well, was and the rest in Ooh. the credits? Goes, I'm going to have all my guests. Kobe Bryant. Suzanne Summers. And the rest. <laughs> and they gave me a folding chair like I was a kid at Thanksgiving <laughs> at the end of the couch. Look what you're sitting on right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, that's how we're back. That's it how far. It comes full circle. You're all right comes, back into it. And now you open those doors and I'll be mad. You go, hey, Craig, you are bad. <laughs> No, just like your six-year-old son, I so wish I could have gone, and here he is, and actually be Magic Johnson, because I had planned him stopping by. I think a lot of people would like that reunion to take place. But I, I, We uh, can do it know. here on the show. There are, there are quite a few people that I shouldn't run into, because I, I make fun of them. But you seem like one of those just nice guys. Like, everybody likes you. No, no a lot of people hate me. Huh. <laughs> no. A lot of people hate me. Huh. No, so, I mean, so, a lot of comedians, like, you know, just, no. people get jealous. You're the stuff. type of guy that I think everybody knows in their own personal group. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody knows home, Craig Shoemaker. Yeah, everyone's got a Craig in the group. Nothing, yeah. nothing like down. It's like there's a comfortableness. I think with you, you're your an every person as a character. Well, mm-hmm. I, you know, not to uh, be, uh, you know, get too deep here because we're supposed to talk about cocks and pussies. Is that correct? <laughs> it, <laughs> this is the intermission. But yeah. the, okay, yeah. it, I am a man who likes bromances. Right, I've Bang hung out. I've hung Move out. Move on, <laughs> and that's what. Get back as a pussy. <laughs> that's what I was going to go deep. And that's what I'm at. I'm here for you. <laughs> go deep. Go deep with me, Craig. Hmm. That's it. I'm not asking you on another bromance. Okay, that, that, that's cool. See, we went golf on the other day. We I, went I golf the other day. I courted him in a nice romantic way. <laughs> really? Yeah. He followed through and joined our club. Oh, I'm part of a club now. He's oh. part of a club. Did this did this uh, bromance date go better than the time in Seattle? Or did you see him in the parking lot with his clubs I, and go, uh-uh, uh-uh. I didn't take out my wiener <laughs> right. to Frank and go, right. hey, that's a stiff shaft over here. <laughs> Big Bertha, baby. Ever try graphite? <laughs> <laughs> that's right, baby. Okay, so you had your... Ben, but it won't break up. You had your date, your bromance. Oh, but I have these all the time with these guys, and they never follow through. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, God. Frank was the first. Oh, no, really? how sweet. You're the first I've taken to the club oh, to okay. join. You just saved your ass right there. You're like, they all said no, and Frank was the first to actually buy on the, <laughs> to the mandate. I was the first you took there? No, no, I feel no, special. no. You weren't the first that I took Thanks. there. I've you took C. Thomas a- Howe there first? No, I took him to Bel Air. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's a really nice you place. A bastard wore plaid <laughs> pants and never I saw him again. <laughs> C. Thomas <laughs> No, but I, 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 it's a weird thing about uh, having a bromance. I, I grew up with this. My, my friend, my, as a matter of fact, Justin just today says, who's your best friend? I said, Cerami. That's the guy I've known since 10 years old. Wow. And I said, That's yeah. so rare. And he said, why? I said, because he has, he has all the qualities that I like in a guy. And there's nothing, you know, gay about it. Mm-hmm. You know, he just like to hang with certain people. They, he's very similar to me politically, spiritually, and all that kind of stuff. So we grew up together, and we didn't start off like going, hey, let's have a spiritual talk at 10. Yeah. You know, but it's developed into... But is he one of those no, friends they that... They end up jerking each other off at 11. Never done that. Now never done that. I've life. never had sex with a guy. Honest to God. I would tell you if I did. Have you ever seen the movie... I uh, kissed one with... dude. I think I told you that story. <laughs> have you ever seen the movie A Home at the End of the World? A Colin Farrell movie? No. Uh, Schmees is in the movie, and he plays young Colin Farrell. He's Seriously? an actor, yeah. And there's a scene in the movie yeah. where 
Well, I don't know what age you are in the movie. What he age looks like you a young ten? talent. Fifteen. Mm-hmm. That works for me. Where two fifteen-year-old boys jerk each other off in bed oh. because they're both laying down, looking up at the ceiling, and they reach over and do the crisscross arms and jerk each other off. <laughs> And Schmeez was in one of the scenes. This is because so I messed Schmeez. up last week's recording. So his isn't debut I? on screen is cross country skiing yeah. with a, with yeah, a, yeah. With a it's cock. Exactly. It's, yeah, jerking <laughs> oh off goodness. another dude under the covers. Imagine taking and your mom down to the premiere. To a completion. <laughs> to a complete. <laughs> oh, other other guys jerking me off. O face. Oh uh, wow! God. I'm yeah. gonna have to see this movie. It's a good so, movie. This is how you bonded. Hmm. Well, I with, uh, no, I've never bonded like that. You made that part up. Now, don't bring it back to... Now you and, and we were just talking to Craig about that. Let's reset the program. Now, you and Sarami... Like Mr. Radio over is there. It, Let's reset. Have you All seen... Right, Frosty. Let's, uh, yeah, exactly. let's bring it back to the radio here. Uh, so we're here with Craig Shoemaker, just to remind you. He's going to be at the Canyon Club on July 9th. He was just saying he bonded with his buddy Sarami by jerking him off. Uh, when he was 11 Craig. years old. They met at 10, but a, they figured how... We consummate this. Now, have thing. you seen Cerami's uh, penis? No. Never. Never Even seen like his just penis, no. in gym class or, or well, actually, locker rooms? Well, actually, quite frankly, uh, he was. We did a lot of nude things in high school, okay? And you we, never saw his penis? No, he was one who would never go nude. We oh. were, we're, a lot of us were nude people. Mm-hmm. And he was never one. He was the getaway driver. Late bloomer. Well, mm-hmm. the time we walked up to that. the door, did I tell you that? When we walked up to the door nude. Like we were high one night. We I had a fort called the Dungeon. That we all hung out in this dungeon. It was yeah. like a, it was really cool. It was like this garage that was detached from the house that we our rental house that we lived in. My mom and sisters and what. So anyway, it was like we had wiring that went through. It went. It was like uh, it, five extension cords with duct tape, like just duct taping them together through the ground into the water into the basement <laughs> up oh. into. The ceiling with the bulb. Nice you know, and safe. Yeah. Yeah. Really safe. I have no idea how I'm living right now. <laughs> unless this is an illusion. No, you're in, in hell. Fucking yeah. hell. You're in hell. This Frank. is hell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is eternity. So <laughs> we, we were sitting around Stone and, go, and we used to make fun of each other. So we said, let's take this outside. Let's just go. We'd say, let's go make fun of people. Let's knock on their door and just make fun of them. Right. And then, and, and then I go, and then George goes, well, we're nude. <laughs> It wasn't George enough. had a big dick. There was always that one friend too. Yeah, was right. like, well, no, nah, no, nah, George didn't. He didn't have a big dick. No, because big dicks, quite frankly, aren't funny. So if you're going to go for the comedy factor, yeah, you got to be. Yeah. You got to be tiny, like the guy. Because nobody the looks at a big one. Like and the laughs. guy in Hangover. Yeah. The, the, the Asian guy in Hangover. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Now that guy had a big schlong. You'd be going. The whole every guy in the movie theater would be going. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Put that thing away. That might have been funny, Everybody else though. is going, everybody else is going. Because he's Asian. Asian guy with a gigantic that, dick. That would because have been he's hilarious. Asian, that they might be funny. They should have put a prosthetic on there, but it still was funny. Like a Dirk Diggler situation. Yeah, a Dirk Diggler yeah. prosthetic. My mm-hmm. son can't wait to see the movie. He goes, he goes, I swear to God, he's 11. He goes, hey, Dad, is it true that the Asian guy shows his penis? And he wants he to goes, s- He thanked his penis at the MTV Awards. And now I have to show him the hangover. And Are you going to let him watch it? Yeah. I said it's basically a bush with a nugget. You know this guy. Would you let your daughter at twelve? No, I would not. Stop okay, because comparing, I do not have any females in my. I do. That's why she she asked me the other day. Like they were, can you she watch s- Hangover? Stayed over at her friend's house and and called up and said, "Hey, Dad, can I watch the Hangover?" Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Hell no!" You did. Yeah, I said, and no. I would too. But I'm not going to say that with my son. I'll watch it with him, and <clears> right. you know, answer but, questions. And yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. But uh, wow! So you got to you got to bring me back to what we're doing. Uh, Cerami and uh, George oh, so, wanting so, to show so some dick. So we have a whole plan, and we go as soon as they answer the door. You say this, and I'll say this. I'll say, we have a whole rehearsal, like a it's like a Scorsese script. Preamble so Cerami, to the whole Kenny Loggins days. Cerami pulls up the car, fully clothed, and we put our clothes in his car. And me, uh, George, uh, and and Tommy, we get out, knock on the door, and. We freeze when she answers. Nobody says this first line. It's like, who has the first line? Jerk off. You're line. You're the first line. Line. So Strammy's in there. You were going to tell her. <laughs> he's like from the bushes. He's like, yeah. no, he's from the car. car. Uh, <laughs> tell her she's old. So then George. So then George. All of a sudden, he goes, "What's the story, old lady?" And like really bad material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He like bagged our good stuff, and he goes, "What's the story, bird's nest head? Get the coffin ready." <laughs> we're, so we're while ma- you're naked while we're nude we're making yeah. fun of her I have no pubic hair at the time <laughs> and I'm making fun of her and all of a sudden I did my patented penis helicopter I started giving her that you know uh, yeah. oh like you the know. windmill yeah, sort I get, of. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go hey look what's, what's the traffic I'm doing the penis helicopter she starts screaming <laughs> ah! you have been 
get arrested? Uh, of course. Well, here it got worse. So we, <laughs> we run, right? Yeah, the getaway yeah. car, mm-hmm. he takes off in the car, fully clothed with our clothes. <laughs> and he's driving the exact, <laughs> exact speed that we're running. So he can be right next to us. And he's, we're just going, hey, man, this is part of the plan. Come on, pull the fucking car over. And he's going, he's just right next to us going. <laughs> so, and then finally, I get in the back seat. George jumps on the hood of the car. And this was a classic. He's looking in the windshield. Rami speeds up to 55. And he's looking in the windshield. This isn't funny anymore. <laughs> Let me in, you prick. And Sarami's honking the horn, going through basketball courts. People playing basketball. George is spreading gold completely naked on the hood of the car. And he's begging us to stop the car. He's like, please. And then he pulls and he grabs the wiper and he goes, I'll rip it off if you don't let me in. And then Sarami turns it on. It's chucking him around. You fucker. He's just like tossing him around. And finally, this is the best line of all. I'm howling in the back seat. I, I got in. You know, I put my clothes on. George is looking at which his glasses are crooked. And he, and he was like, came from private school and we corrupted. At him. He was really bad too. So he looks at it, he goes, Please let me in. I'm gonna get arrested and I won't get the Naval Academy. <laughs> he's thinking of higher education. He's new on the hood of a car. Like the and wolf. he just called a lady like, to get the coffin ready, bird's nest head. And he's worried about the Naval Academy. Right. I think that went out with getting out of the car <laughs> and leaving your clothes in there. Uh, yeah, but I'm still friends with all these he's guys. He's your we, best friend to this day, that guy. Well, Sarami, the getaway. The, the getaway driver. Yeah, he's still. Yeah, he just the guy who originally tried to fuck him by driving away, but he luckily jumped in. Right. And yeah, and yeah fuck him by driving away, not your way, by right. the way. Yeah, 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 not, yeah. not your double jerk oh, no. off penis. So you way. and Sarami are the kind of guy friends that you could take, let's say, a, a I don't know, a road trip from California to New York. Not say we, anything the whole way and be com- completely we comfortable. We go away, uh, nine of us. There's not still hang out together. Same group of guys. Same. Uh, what do you go do? Well, every year we go. We pick a new place. These guys are like city like, slickers. Yeah, city slickers, dudes. Yeah, but our, we've never done that. Actually, that would be kind of fun, but we do golf and strip clubs. Oh, my yeah, friend. Right. My I love friend. Goes, we do a bunch of different things. You know, Fuck driving golf cattle. and strip <laughs> clubs. <Yeah>. Strip clubs. <laughs> well, and these guys are, have been married for a hundred years, and I've been done and bid. You know, I've, I've been, I've done everything, right? So. Yeah. I'm like Mr. Hollywood. I'm the organizer, though, even though they're in Philadelphia. It's good. One's in Texas. There, there are a few different places. But, so we pick a place, and it always has to have strip clubs. So they live in these strip clubs. So my friend Anthony, this jackass, was unbelievable. He, he, he's, how much money he spent. Take a guess what he spent. One this, night at a strip club? Or two, the, two nights. Uh, two nights. Give me the two-night total. The first uh, night, we were already making fun of him. <clears throat> then he, then he, then he uh, went above that amount. Two night total. This is a little wrestler guy that's been married to a virgin. You know, she was a virgin when they got married. He's been married to her for like 20 years. Mm-hmm. So he gets out. It's like, look out. 3,500 bucks. 3,500? That's your total? I was going to go for two, two days. I was going to go two grand. So I don't know. Two grand. Okay. How about $10,000? <laughs> when he has a, a. I'm not exaggerating. At home, <laughs> On his what? daughter is tripping over a bucket because that's getting the water in the kitchen that they have a leak in the fucking oh my ceiling. God. And they have bad, bad uh, linoleum that's Whoa. peeling. Up, I said, your daughter's tripping over linoleum over your bucket. We called him the bucket after that. Right. And you're spending 10 grand. He goes, but she, but she rubbed on it. <laughs> what? <laughs> you didn't even get anything. Oh, my That's God. That's the top 10 grand. They get you into that champagne room. And, oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. And he, he spent $10,000. Oh, the first night. How was, do you even explain that to your wife? Well, a, a business expense. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, mm. Oh, yeah. We did a thing. Yeah. And now. and he, so Golf he, was very expensive. Right. I lost a lot of balls. <laughs> I had to, to buy balls. It's another thing. He doesn't golf. He goes, well, you have your thing and I have mine. I go, but it doesn't cost $10,000 to tee it up. <laughs> then you get 18 I, holes. Yeah. yeah. And he got no holes. No, no holes, no for, holes 10 for, G's. for 10 G's. Can what? you even believe that? Wouldn't you as a friend? She, she, touched, she touched it on the outside. I call, wow, you are desperate. Encourage oh, him just to go get a hooker. Or I, no, that, I, I, yeah. more you know, and by the way, he's short, and we kept seeing this. Remember the you know the Geico sign? It's a pile of money with eyeballs. Oh yeah, we, dang, we, dang, we, dang. we ended up calling him Geico. Oh my god! So every five <laughs> seconds, we'd be driving along to the next strip club, and there would be the billboard Geico. <laughs> so these are the bromances I have. But what I was saying before is, it's hard. You know, now that I live here in L.A., it's hard to develop bromances. Mm. But I'm real honest with the guys. You know, like uh, I've got, you know, some famous neighbors and stuff, but I know them through the business. So I'm thinking, well, it'd be, it'd be cool because we understand one another. So I'll go, hey, want to have breakfast? <laughs> like, 
But, but, I, but I, like, and I'm, and, and, and I then, hope he's out of bed by now. So then we, so <laughs> yeah. then, then we had breakfast together. You know, you're not at his bed with a breakfast tray. No, a TV it's a couple tray. different with guys. Well, you know, I let him pick the place. <laughs> Freshly right. squeezed. It's, yeah, it's make not, him feel like a man. Not, it's not a gay thing. I'm just going. I just want a friend Aww. in my area. But ceramic lives three thousand miles away. Yeah, you need so a, you need an LA ceramic. Exactly. Do you buy breakfast? But well, that's the thing is, that's the problem with bromance is, is what's the etiquette on a bromance? I wish you had a talk show that we could have people that would call in, but instead of your fucking basement, I'm steamed out of my no. ass here. <laughs> I think, th- I, think I, I sprouted a weed. Are you sweating? Yeah, yeah. I'm fucking sweating. <laughs> You're right by the light. Oh, is Maybe that what it is? Yeah, yeah, it couldn't that. have anything to do with not a window in sight. <laughs> not a window and a lot even, of wind. Even the faint plant is dying. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it. I've never seen a worse fake plant in my life. Are you kidding? Look at the foliage on that. It doesn't yes, look it's, fake. How in the world does a fake plant go down? <laughs> it's, it's growing down. How does this happen? Oh, yeah. It's a fake plant. You can make it go whichever way you want. It's, it's like Gumby. It's like Gumby was in... Yeah, the leaf. It was like Gumby because was hanging out. Because in a dark room, I had to make it look like it was half dying to look real. If it was all awake, you'd know try, it was fake. Trying to let me look authentic. Oh, oh. That I, was I intentional. Could, I couldn't have told by uh, by the, the color of the leaves. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't have t- you couldn't tell from wires sticking out from the plastic. And the tag. I, that, that, that wouldn't, that's not a giveaway. Oh, my God. <laughs> the grass pot of dirt. <laughs> and the fact that it weighs this much. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, it be, it you know, you're really stronger. That's bolster. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, the wires are twisted. The wires are twisted bromances. together like an art project I had when I was in seventh grade. I'm for moving. I'm getting ready to pack that thing. All right, so that's the last thing that goes. That's the last thing that goes. I'd leave that here. <laughs> leave it here for the next. I'd guest? leave that here. Yes. Oh god. That's kindling. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, so I I went on the uh, bromantic date. What the the, the f- breakfast. Actually, three of them. Three, no, so three different get, guys I tried this back? with. Do you get the call back? Do and you... that's the thing is, no. no. And I don't know. And I go, how long do I give him? <laughs> that's what I'm literally thinking these things. So you things. have breakfast and you go, hey, all right. Well, good seeing you. Hey, man. Great seeing you. And they're always happy with our right, date. Right, This is great. Let's do this again. I'm going, that's a great idea. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Buying. Yeah. Huh? Are you buying? I mean, no, so you I don't know. know I, I, I think whoever asks buys. No, 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 no. That's a date date. A man date, you invite a guy out. If it's food. If you're going out to play Split. golf later, or you're mm-hmm. drinking after breakfast, Split it. You buy the food, they buy the drinks at the bar. Okay. That's how it works. You alternate uh, checks. But when you guys had your date, what did places. you do? Uh, I didn't have to pay for anything, but he didn't oh, pay for anything either. He, he, got his, it's like, he took me out, didn't buy one, get one free. And he let me have the one free. That seems I nice. I took him on a coupon date. Yeah, a coupon <laughs> date. Ooh. And he didn't mind that I clipped the coupons, unlike a real date. A chick would probably have a problem A with chick that. would not like you pulling but out see, the coupon. But Here, see. can you keep this on the down low? <laughs> hey, coupon, this is expired. A oh, free lobster. This is kick-ass. Oh, yeah. No, you no, know, I took him. Uh, actually, I don't think I paid for anything, did I? I would have. I would, no, no, really, I would have. No, you just played golf. We had waters. One of, one of the reasons I wanted you to join, though, you is should have bought a beer. so I don't have to pay him. Oh. I offered you a beer. I offered you anything you wanted. Did you really? Yes, of course. That's, That's why said, you filled hey, up waters and filled up all the fucking was, cup holders with water? I was, I was doing that so because... So I didn't have any place to put any beers and it didn't cost I, any money? I was in a hurry. <laughs> oh, and you were nervous to, about your new date and I everything. Like, oh, yeah, Frank... <laughs> Oh my God. He looks so ravishing was, in, that, and was that, in his golf attire. He thought that uh, he invited I, me to play golf, mm-hmm. but he told me later that he thought that I would suck at it. But I he did. invited me to go play something that I, he thought I would be horrible I did. at. I did. Why did you invite me to, to I didn't do think that? You, I was taking a chance. I was hoping you'd be good, and I saw this guy with this great swing on the driving range mm-hmm. as I pulled in. Right. And it was Frank. And it was like a dream for me. Oh my God, that's so <laughs> funny. It's like, it's like the real day where you're like, I didn't know what to expect. And all of a sudden, I was like, Oh, that's hilarious. Oh and this is a true story. I've never seen him play golf, so I don't know. He's that. really good. And, wow. he, and he has no idea he's that good. Every time he'd hit it, I'd go, damn it. Who just, won? You just got me again. We, you don't believe this, how, how perfect this is. <laughs> we, and we talk. We talk. Oh, God, you guys are fans. Not even making it up. Not even making it up. And even the way he told me was very gay. He goes, you know, we tied. <laughs> we tied. <laughs> Can you believe it? Same in the front as the back. <laughs> and then we bought knuckles. That's what he said. He goes, same as the front as the back. Same exact score. It's unbelievable. <laughs> we tied. I let you take the lead. And then we tied. It's like, sometimes he was on top, and then sometimes I was on top. 
I ended up going back and forth oh, on the God. end. Oh, shit. It ended up a tie. <laughs> I wasn't below par, baby. <laughs> oh, my God. On that note, Craig, come back anytime. I'm sure oh. I'm going to see you on the golf course. Right. Yes. We're, let's go play. Uh, <laughs> and I'll be at the Canyon Club. We're all playing. You guys are going to come out see yeah. my full show. Mm-hmm. July 9th. It'll be fun. What time? Go to CraigShoemaker.com. Get the details. I think it's 9, but I don't know. But uh, we'll have a party afterwards. We'll get the little monk room, they call it. Okay, cool. And we'll have a little party with uh, your listeners and stuff like that. We'll have, we'll have fun at the Canyon. July 9th and uh, coming up to all sorts of other places. Just all look right. at my CraigShoemaker.com website. And, of course, Facebook. We're all over that, right? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to be on uh, vacation from our terrestrial show from the 1st through the 11th. So the 9th falls right there on the vacation. So uh, come out and see us. It'll be probably the first time me and Heidi see, uh, we'll see yeah. each other yeah, over true. the break. Mm-hmm. So come out to, to the Canyon Club and see Craig Shoemaker. This has been another episode of After Hours. Thanks for joining us.